Hello and good afternoon. This is take one. Uh, hopefully I don't do more than one. Okay, so I just want to do a conceptual type of video where I talk about very vague concepts. Is it better to be corporeal? <laughs> is it better to <laughs> is it better to be corporeal or incorporeal? And I'll provide some definitions. Corporeal, it's an adjective of the nature of the physical body or bodily, <coughs> material or tangible. Incorporeal, also an adjective, not corporeal or material, insubstantial, of or relating to or characteristic of non-material things. In law, it's also without material existence but existing in con contemplation of law such as a franchise. <clears throat> okay, so once again the question I'm asking, is it better to be corporeal or incorporeal? Worded differently, you might say tangible or intangible. Now, this might seem like a strange question to ask. After all, so far as I know, every human I ever encounter is corporeal, or rather possesses a physical body. But what would life be like if you could exist intangibly or incorporeally? And I don't mean dead or as a ghost. Okay, pause it for a minute there. Maybe you could float around as a fine mist or a vapor or as a cloud of smoke or maybe an aura of light. Uh, truthfully, being a water vapor or a cloud of smoke is still a corporeal existence because I still think that's physically material. So is it possible to be an ethereal being and do such beings exist? Is that like an angel? Okay, so let's suppose for a minute that you could exist as a formless being and yet remain visibly perceptive or perceptible in this physical reality. So I will repeat that since I've been dropping a lot of different ideas. So the question I'm asking, so let's suppose for a minute that you could exist as a formless being and yet remain visibly perceptible in this physical reality. And let's assume you can just talk and communicate with people too, because that's pretty important, and you can hear. Even without the mechanics of a physical body, let's just suppose you could do that. So I kind of came up with a list, uh, very quickly, maybe within 10 minutes, of the advantages and disadvantages of such an existence. So that being an incorporeal existence, you have no physical nature to you. So I can think of a, a few advantages. One being that you cannot be imprisoned or detained if you're incorporeal, right? How do you uh, put a, a mist behind bars or in a holding cell? You could just float through, right? Um, and, and also included in this earthly authority could not restrict your mobility, right? If there's border checks or security or police stations or whatever, they, they couldn't stop you from going anywhere you wanted, right? Uh, and then carrying that idea onward, uh, boundaries such as locked doors would not restrict you, and because of that you'd probably be privy to a lot of restricted information because you could just float around government offices, whatever. And um, next on my list is arguably um, you wouldn't have to exercise, go to the gym, you wouldn't have to shower, you wouldn't have to eat. Uh, going to the bathroom would probably probably be unnecessary. That's debatable. Okay, um, now the second part of my list is the disadvantages of being incorporeal or intangible, of having no physical existence. So what would disadvantages be? Well, the main one would be that um, you could not physically manipulate matter. Right? We could maybe come up with, with a scenario how you could be an incorporeal being and manipulate physical matter, 
but that's getting a little bit creative. I'm just going to generally say that as an incorporeal being, you probably can't manipulate physical matter, at least not with your hands and muscle and strength. Right. Okay, uh, number two. Again, these are kind of debatable, but uh, physical intimacy is probably out of the question. Although, some but uh, sports, sports, you probably can't throw a football or play catch or kick a ball. <laughs> and uh, hand shaking, you know, you can't shake someone's hand. It's probably impossible. Okay, so if you're incorporeal, um, do you need physical property? Would that be important? Like uh, a shelter or a home is important if you're a physical being, but if you're incorporeal, well, maybe you could sleep out in the rain, right? What do you need a physical property for? Um, do you need a vehicle? Do you need a car? Do you need a motorcycle to get around? Again, a little bit debatable, but uh, I don't think that personal property is necessary so much anymore, right? Anyway, uh, that's just... Uh, okay, so moving forward, the, the point I am really trying to make is that our physical corporeal existence is what makes us susceptible to authority structures and authority being imposed upon us right that was the entire point of my exercise not that ah okay so uh i, I wrote down some notes but i'm can have our personal property Okay, so I'll go back. So the point I'm trying to make is that our physical corporeal existence is what makes us susceptible to authority structures, right? And further, uh, we can have our personal property seized and detained if we are, you know, physical beings that need personal property. And if we are physical beings and corporeal, then we ourselves can be um, detained because we're physical. So this kind of brings up another question about our current reality, our corporeal existence, and uh, that's whether or not we own our own physical bodies, or do we merely possess them? And I actually thought this was uh, a pretty neat question to ask, so I went on to Google, and I started doing some searches, uh, just typing in generally, um, do we own our physical bodies? And a lot of legal stuff came up, uh, particularly medical kind of papers and research and legal discussions as well on uh, whether or not we possess our physical bodies and the strange thing is is there really is no clear answer as to whether or not we do possess our physical bodies oh sorry some here at home okay um, there was a a case where uh, military soldiers were given LSD and they were being tested as to how they would react and they were given this LSD without their consent or even knowledge of it and I was just reading this one medical paper, actually it's a legal paper talking about medical things and uh, the judge in Pennsylvania actually ruled that it was not um, actually I better look this up just so I have it right. Okay, so... Okay, I'm going to read this into the script. Just It'll say it better than I can say it. And I'll leave the link for this particular um, Yale University article in the description below uh, by somebody with an Italian-sounding last name. Okay, the title for this article was Do We Own Our Own Bodies? On page 7 of this uh, paper, kind of at the last paragraph, it says what it says. I will begin reading. More recently, there was a case arising out of an incident in which soldiers were subjected to experiments with LSD without their knowledge or consent. As a result of these experiments, they were quite badly injured. Eventually, when one of the soldiers found out, he sued for compensation. Note that the issue in the case was not whether the soldiers owned their bodies or whether the government had a right to do this to them, period. That was taken almost for granted. Rather, the issue was whether they could at least receive compensation from the government for the harm that was done to them. In an extraordinary opinion, from my point of view, this is actually the writer speaking, not me, uh, Justice Scalia said that there was no duty to compensate them, being the soldiers. The bo 
their bodies, in that sense, belonged to the state. Right? So here's even a legal decision. I'm not saying that's how all legal decisions are decided, but here is a legal decision in Pennsylvania, in the states, where um, it was considered that the bodies of these soldiers were belonging to the state. That's kind of a scary idea. Okay, I'm not going to go on and on and digress um, onto different subjects, <coughs> but because I'm on this subject of whether or not you own your body, um, legally or medically, uh, there's related topics that seem to come up on this are issues of abortion, which is a subject I don't really like. It's sad. I don't want to talk about it. And um, there's also organ donation. Uh, what other things? Uh, military conscription. It's not as commonplace these days to hear about something like that, but Vietnam War, World War II, maybe the war in Korea, uh, men were forced into conscription. Well, now you're dealing with uh, making people do something that, that maybe they don't even want to do or consent to doing, but maybe they have no right over their own physical body. Okay, maybe you're listening and maybe this comes to your mind. It was one of the first things that came to my mind is that um, solicitation of your own physical body for, well, prostitution, um, you know, you are not legally supposed to do that. Although at least where I live, I live in Canada, in Ontario, uh, apparently that's not the illegal act legally. It's actually the solicitation that is illegal. So it's like strangely worded even in the in the legal statutes. I don't want to say laws because they're not laws. So different subject. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm kind of losing where my topic was. Again, I, I, I recorded this in one take. I'm not going to make it again. Otherwise, I'll never be able to finish videos. So yeah. Oh, oh, here's what I was really getting at. See, this is unscripted. Um, in Black's Legal Dictionary, <clears throat> there is a concept called duress. You may have heard of this, and I'm really repeating this <coughs> as it pertains to what's legal. And But anyway, uh, duress in the Legal Dictionary, Black's Legal Dictionary, in I think this is 2009 version, says duress, strictly the physical confinement of a person or the detention of a contracting party's property. In the field of torts, which is like civil law with his property and damages, dress is considered a species of fraud in which compulsion takes the place of a deceit in causing injury. That's a little bit technical and jargony, but it's really relating to the confinement of a person or the detention of a contracting party's property. Now, of course, this being what's legal, if we look up the definition of what a person is, it doesn't necessarily mean a natural flesh and blood person. It's talking about a legal person, which is a legal fiction. It's, you know, your birth certificate. And I'm not going to get into the legal person debate, but um, yeah. So this is interesting that there is this legal concept for personal property. Now, <clears throat> again, I, I tried to look this up with not so much success in Black's Legal Dictionary is uh, whether <clears throat> I looked up the word body because I want to know you know maybe something would jump out at me as as to whether your body is your personal property I didn't really find a whole lot of that in the legal definitions in this dictionary but just body in general I'll leave a screenshot of this it hopefully you can see it on the page I'm reading on uh, the main part of a written instrument such as the central part of a statute okay that's the body of a document or a statute the collect a collection of laws a term a body of laws okay definition three this is what I wanted to say to read in an artificial person created by a legal authority okay that's what a body is kinda strange because we're already three definitions into the main definition of body and we haven't even mentioned a physical flesh and blood body right so clearly when they speak about a body in what's legal they're not talking about the dictionary um, colloquial commonplace defini definition of what a flesh and blood physical body is uh, number four an aggregate of individuals or groups okay a deliberate assembly an aggregate of individual or groups and then there's body corporate which kind of is an interesting word because we're probably talking about an incorporated, you know, maybe board of directors or something. <clears throat> but again, body corporate is being used um, in, in a legal corporate type of sense. And it's kind of neat that the word even corporeal, 
which I started this video with, is uh, kind of similar to the word corporate, right? It obviously has the same root word and meaning, right? So even the language we use. Uh, I haven't been able to tease apart whether or not we own our physical bodies. I've looked at several different uh, Google articles, um, just what I could look up in 30 minutes. And strangely, it's very hard to find anything legally or even on the internet which concretely says whether or not you own your own physical body, right? Okay, so I mentioned this idea of corporeal bodies, incorporeal bodies, and <coughs> the really the thing I wanted to tie in was this other legal concept of duress, right? And duress is holding somebody's property or detaining it. Well, this is uh, a little confusing when we're not really sure whether our own flesh and blood physical bodies are actually our property or somebody else's. So my big point, I don't know if I've made this clear or even elaborated it enough, but can it be said that if we don't, let's just say we don't own our physical bodies, we don't own this, the state owns it or whatever being controls the earth owns it, however you want to conceive of this, then we are possessing these physical bodies and somebody else owns these physical bodies, right? And this is a strange, weird concept, but if that is the case, then we actually might qualify for being under a state of duress. Or I suppose, maybe I'm thinking about this through now, the opposite is true. If we physically, if we own our physical bodies, if we own our physical bodies, suppose we're a soul and we own this physical body that we're possessing, then if somebody else detains it or restricts access or prevents you from soliciting it, say you want to prostitute yourself, I, I don't mean to be rude, but it, thinking about these things, these strange concepts come up, uh, how can somebody else prevent you from from making decisions over the physical body? But somehow, you know, this is important, I'm bouncing around with a lot of different ideas, because the entire body of legal statutes, and even common law and the lawful precedents, precedents do pertain to your physical body, you, if that is you, I don't know. So, I don't know, a uh, bit of a rant. Is it clear? No. Again, just talking off the top of my head, but I'm certainly not going to record it twice. Thanks for listening. Uh, life training for success. Hopefully uh, you're getting trained and becoming more successful. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day.